So this is where I stopped in the last video. I had begun the process of creating the stripe that's going to go through the center of this. And I'm now going to add, um, I think, two more lines. And these are just going to be lines. They're not going to be the larger path later on, but they should still accomplish the same thing. And I've got one extra point there because I didn't double click in my last one. Uh, I can always delete that later. It's not a problem. And I'm going to do something similar above. And I find it easier. I don't. I can't ever seem to make them stop where I want to. But it's easy enough to get rid of the extra points, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, so I'm now going to get rid of the stuff I didn't want, the extra ones. Okay, and this is what I'm going to need for my egg. This one is going to be filled. The other ones are going to be um, stroked and or bordered. And then ultimately I'm going to have an extra copy of this background egg to give a border or an outline to the overall larger shape. So that's my copy that I'm going to come back to. Actually, let me go ahead and do the border part on it now so you can visualize just in case you're not sure what I'm doing there. Fill and oops. All right, so this one is now just bordered. The one on the right, I'm going to give a color, and then I'm going to start to color the other pieces. Um, so far, if you'll recall, I have um, a green, slightly Wonder Woman-y egg, and I have the um, orange polka dotted one, and I have this bottom one um, that probably I'm going to take in a bluey direction because of the colors in the other but this is at least partially a matter of personal preference. Just make sure you have some contrast happening um, within the design and I'm not going to get super picky about any particular color preference that you may have. All right, um, that is the background that I want to go with. This one is going to have a border that's bright and colorful. I may go with yellow for this border. It's not large enough yet, but it's the right color. Nope. And I'm going to deliberately pick something that is bold, but not as bold as the outline that's going to go around this later because that addresses any edge issues I might otherwise have. And then the fill of this one will be, I don't feel like I've used enough pinky purpley, so I'm going to go with, and that's the wrong one. I'm going to go with that, and then I'm going to pick, I think, maybe even just white for this border or stroke on the rest of these. And made them thick so that they show up. And now it's just the outline part. So that really quickly went from looking kind of not like an Easter egg to like an Easter egg because of the color application. Uh, for this one, I could go with a darker version of the egg color, which is kind of the direction I've been going today, is try to stay in the same color family. And that one's close. What's wrong with it is the border part isn't high enough up. So I need to use the bring forward function to get that on top of all of the other elements that were there. Okay, so I now have three differently patterned Easter eggs. Um, I'm going to group the most recent one, and I'm then going to worry about the arrangement of them. If you remember what the original looked like, this is closer to what I'm after, meaning they need to overlap. They need to have um, some elements that make them read as a group rather than as three separate static objects, and so that's what I'm going to do. And once I've done that, I'm going to start to consider what else I need to sort of pull this together into the Easter Bunny-ish um, sort of finished look. And again, I don't necessarily have to have the word Easter anywhere in here, 
I just want it to look springy. So I'm, they're grouped already, which makes grabbing them a lot easier. The, they're stacked already because each one of them is grouped. And if you didn't like which one, ever one was in front of whichever other one, you could certainly change that. So if I thought the Wonder Woman egg needed to be in front of the blue one, I could do that by using the arrange function again. I don't really want to make that happen though. I'm happier with the positioning that they're in. Uh, so the outside ones are tilted. The middle one is sort of straight up and down. If I thought it needed a little bit of an angle, I can angle it as well. And now they read pretty decently. Um, and I'm happy with those, so I'm going to select them and group the groups, bringing them all together into a single cluster, which allows me to arrange this a lot more easily. I have two extra paths that are just left over from some of my earlier stuff, but otherwise everything in here right now is just shows up as group, and that's good. I can name this group as egg, and or eggs, and that's good. So that element is complete, and I'm ready um, to finish this up, I've decided the way we're going to approach it. We are going to use the inspiration image of the Easter Bunny in that we're going to grab, we're going to draw ears above this and put the word spring in between. Um, and not going to worry about the mouth, nose, whiskery bits. We're just going to use the eggs with sort of ears coming off the top of them. Um, I may work, put the word spring below, I don't know, but the ears are the next piece I'm going to do. That's going to be a separate video um, and, you know, just sort of know we're getting closer to pulling this together.